Hello everyone. Today I'm going to talk to you about something uh, uh, very important and very important to the American philosophy. Um, I'm going to talk to you about progressive adult education and for that I have um, utilized a very wonderful source. It is written by Dr. John Elias, a professor for religious studies at Fordham University and Dr. Sharon Marion, a professor of adult education at the University of Georgia. It's called Philosophical Foundation of Adult Education, third edition, and uh, it is one of my most beloved works out there on adult education. It's a good compilation of, uh, of adult education theories, and I highly recommend to the ones who are interested in pursuing, a, uh, pursuing studies in adult education. And uh, for today's uh, uh, the subject, I'm going to talk to you about uh, uh, progressive adult education and how uh, these two authors have compiled into their book. So let's continue on and let's talk about what are the basic pr principles of, of um, uh, adult education. The, the progressive thought was uh, it came as uh, it was developed because of the needs and the in interest and, and then it, uh, it, it utilized a scientific method. It was a method that attempted to to be involved and embedded into problem-solving techniques that would uh, uh, serve the, the people at that time. But different from our thoughts like liberal, uh, uh, like liberal thought is that at this type of philosophy took into account the centrality of experience. Having experience was seen as essential, was something good and loved and wanted. Therefore, that, so we have a, a difference between what's been uh, earlier the liberalist thought uh, on to the progressivist thought, and uh, most importantly, it is a very uh, it, it has very pragmatic and utilitarian goals that focus on the betterment of the humanity. But most important, what struck most uh, to me about this philosophy is that you're talking about the idea of social responsibility. Responsibility here is. Uh, it's talk about the education is what's main and how uh, it's the main driver of how it can change uh, a society and also is the main driver as we'll see further on for social reform so let's continue on and let's take a historical view of it so originally it was originated by a rationalist and, 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 and empirical and scientific thought and, um, and, and these are the types of the differences that actually drove and, and pushed this new move and progressive movement from what's been earlier identified as um, uh, liberalism or um, behaviorism or other thoughts. Now, let's talk about how it developed. It developed in Europe and it became predominant in the United States. European scholars wrote mostly about it, but it was mostly adopted and implemented in the United States, and that's how, uh, how American scholars uh, widespread uh, the, the notion of progressive movement. Well, it developed as a social and an uh, economic uh, political change. The reason why the, the results of the social, economic, and political changes of the 19th century is what drove progressively towards more proactive and active learning, which we'll, we'll take a look at a little earlier. Industrialization uh, has also played a large role, and uh, uh, it, which pushed even more for the progressive adult thought to continue on and, uh, and, and, and progress it further and also implement it not only in classroom but, but also into a, uh, a educational reform nationally or at least in the United States. So what did it exactly seek? What was this progressive movement and what, what was this philosophy and how, uh, what did it seek? Um, authors, uh, Elias and, and Miriam, they, they came along with a very good list of what it sought and what, and what it did. It, it, it replaced tradition, faith, and authority with reason, experience, and feeling. Initially, in the liberal thinking, uh, philosophers have all contemplated that, that, uh, that learning comes only from a faith and authority based uh, and, and traditional base, which would be found in normal uh, uh, private uh, colleges, either in, uh, from Catholicism or from other forms of religious that uh, they were the only channel of distribution of knowledge. Well, what progressivism sought to do is that experience and feelings 
and reason were was going to was going to replace that and give more opportunity to learners to express their individuality. It also advocated uh, contact with with natural objects, uh, the learn of manual skills, and how to incorporate the play into educational experiences. Of course, those educational experiences we wanted to be more at, more proactive, and then and this is what progressivist movement uh, sought to do. It it bettered the, the human conditions. In other words, people became uh, started living better, became healthier, uh, new emancipation, and, and, and a lot of things that generally seen a holistic view uh, better the, the human condition, human beings condition. But most important, what's even uh, what, what I do prefer the most about this movement is that liber it, it liberated special talents and gifts to people. A lot of people that were skilled in different things, in different in, in different areas or different thoughts, were not able to express themselves into liberalism because liberalism fo it, it focused on one discipline, and that inhibited and hindered the ability of others to express themselves in other forms, such as exper experiential learning or even uh, experiential learning or even uh, or even uh, logical thinking. Now, the main thing about about uh, this is that. Uh, it focused on a learner-centered idea. In other words, everything was about the learner. The, lear the, the learning had to occur about the learner who was learning the subject. It wasn't about a subject-based, but rather a, a, a learner individual uh, centered. So that way, uh, the individuals and the people were the ones who were uh, uh, learning them. Most importantly, what we learned from democracy and education by John Dewey is that it engaged people in joint activities to solve common problems. And again, remember, this is a, a progressivist movement, so this is a, 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 a social movement. It could also be classified as a social movement. And uh, the whole idea was to, to better the lives of the human beings, and one way to solve it was to be com uh, communally involved and resolve common problems that were around people. So let's talk about philosophical foundations for a little bit. A philosophical foundation is how, or how this how this movement was built, and what are the underlying reasons, or what are what are the underlying foundation in terms of philosophy that moved it forward. One of the things that uh, pragmatism sought to do uh, uh, was driven by pragmatism. Uh, pragmatism is a very very distinct American philosophy. It's long been argued that it is. Uh, very American and uh, used the United States uh, is who has utilized it the most than than the knowledge. So the ways how to do that was the use of scientific the methods of of study how to use how to understand humans their behaviors their um, um, and uh, their behaviors so their uh, how, how the inner relationships with others in society and many other and many other issues. However. The method, exact methods, those are uh, to be discussed elsewhere because they fall under different categories and uh, different school of thought. One way, uh, uh, another dimension of the philosophical foundation on pragmatism was that it accepts relativism and pluralism worldviews, paradigms, or worldviews depending on uh, the methodology and uh, one uses. The, and, and, and interesting enough is that human experience and other things. Remember, Earlier school of us did not allow human experience. Was not a dimension. In other words, human experience was was not considered was not considered something worthy. But this new progressive area is where it gave a life to human exp uh, experience and it valued it further. More more important is that it emphasized the co consequences of action uh, to determine truth or wrong. In other words, the accountability and those and the consequences of action of action would determine what's good, what's truth, and what's not acceptable. You know. Most importantly, all the, uh, what we do have to emphasize is that as I started uh, talking uh, to it about earlier, progressivism, it emphasized social reform as a real concern for, for philosophy. As we'll see further, social reform, education was long argued by scholars that it is the main or it is the heart, the driving engine of a social reform for a society, society to, uh, to function well. Especially, was uh, highly argued by, by Dewey that uh, education, a, a true education takes place in, in a democratic society and this is what drives uh, a democratic society.
So let's talk about Dewey a little bit. Uh, Dewey, arguably the most influential philosopher of education that the United States of America has ever produced. And um, what, one of his quotes that is also my favorite is, if we teach today as we taught yesterday, we rob our children of tomorrow. In other words, we see an ever-evolving field of ever-changing field of education and how we adapt to it and of course how the more we can uh, embed the more uh, we, we can take uh, in the nest of education the more they are able to think critically and also not only to take education in but also to use this education to change society and this is one of the main points that Dewey makes on one of his books which has been also highly criticized as we'll see later on. So let's talk about Dewey's philosophy. Let's talk about the underlying... Uh, he was again most arguably, uh, arguably the, the most influential philosopher of the 19th, 19th century 18, 19th, beginning of 19th century and uh, this is where even the national reforms were built upon so let's talk about the early stage of the progressive education development well the early stage of progressive education development is that it developed a, uh, a learner center approach. Everything was about the learner. Everything was about how to better learn, how to better absorb information, how to better think, how to better reason. In, in other words, it's, it's all about the learner. The second stage of a progressive education is, is that education is argued to be as the heart of the social reform. And it is the only thing that actually flourishes if it occurs in democracy. And when we talk about the democracy, which is a highly vague ter term, we, we, we're talking about in environments that are, uh, uh, are free to convey our experiences, are free to convey our thoughts, are free to take initiatives, because this is the philosophy within the progressivist movement, uh, after all. And, and school must educate in the individuals in democratic thoughts. In, in other words, we need to be aware that, that uh, that mind is free, and, and one of the Dewey's uh, uh, one of the Dewey's thoughts was that learners are free to learn. They they shouldn't be confined, but rather be exposed to information, and then depending on what their interest and pass are, they need to uh, to retain what, what they, they need, what, what they, their needs are. The third stage of progressive education movement is experimentalism. It's a, so. Let's go back for a minute. So the first stage. Well, when we say about it, when we're talking about learner center approach, well, learner center approach has a lot of criticism by many scholars, which we'll, we'll talk about it a little later. Well, due to flaws that were critical, due to those flaws and those criticism of learner approach and traditional education where, you, uh, where the discipline matters, so a critical and controlled type of learning was implemented. In fact, this was what the philosophy behind the national school reforms occurred during uh, uh, during the 19th century in the United States, which later was criticized even by President Eisenhower and was suggested to abandon the philosophies of Dewey. But so what we see right now, although we do have a uh, so so we start with a learner center approach, and then as stages progress, then we see to have the same approach refined. Taking into taking into uh, taking into account the criticism coming out of the uh, of the of, of, of stages as we move forward. So let's talk about the major theory. Who are the people and what are their contribution? Malcolm Knowles, very well known in the field of adult education, he came out with the um, uh, uh, with several books and and one of his books, actually, his most controversial book was. Uh, uh, pedagogy versus andragogy. However, he came up with a second edition that's uh, from pedagogy to andragogy. So the change in the title was also in itself a, um, a an evaluation of a continuum change from a pedagogic perspective to an andragogic uh, perspective. However, for our purpose right here, what we need to know is that recounting story more that attempted to separate adult schools from uh, schools and universities to develop programs that met the needs of a large number of people in society. Now remember, adult education uh, is a different type of population that the, the scholars and, and, um, and, 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 uh, and teachers work with. And in other words, they are there to learn because they want to learn. And they're not confined by any other issues, but they're there for a reason. Let's talk about somebody who is uh, who, who's not only uh, very well known and highly cited in many 
many scholar books, but also very well respected and, um, and who changed the lives of the millions. We're talking about Paulo Freire. It, it opposed viewing teacher as a sole uh, source of knowledge whose task was to bank knowledge into the minds of students. In other words, we as a teacher, we don't want to just simply tell our students what to do and what to learn. Of course, we're long past them. But we, what we do want to do is that we would like to, uh, for, for our students to, to make sure that they learn what they need to learn and make them think critically on their, on their own. Paul Gravin, adult education is essential to preserve and enhance democratic uh, way of life. And uh, Edward Lindemann, it, it, education, according to him, aims to develop social intelligence. So again, we're going back and forth to the social, uh, the social movement, how education plays a major role in it, and it's also the basis to, uh, to, to many social movements. Other, other major theories are Carl, Carl Rogers, Cyril Hall, and uh, Ralph Tyler. So we talked about history and how it came. We talked about what it sought to do, and then we talked about um, what is its uh, basic philosophy. So let's talk about the principles, the principles that go along with that philosophy. And, so, and, and how did it impact these principles? Well, it broadened the view of education. And how did it do it? it, it well, uh, sociologists call it socialization. And anthropologists, they call it in, in, enculturation. In other words, it created a sense of socialization and enculturation. And um, it, it increased the importance of adult learning. It, it advocated for and introduced a curriculum that was more uh, practical, pragmatic, and and, and most importantly, most importantly, it emphasized experience. Remember, experience was not truly something, uh, something, uh, uh, something valued thus far. But now, we do take that very much into account. So another principle, the way they, it, it created a new focal point in education. Remember, it focused on teachers, uh, on learners with own personal needs, interests, and experience, and in design. In other words, learners are here to learn something specific, something they need, something they want, something they desire, something they're going to use it. This is what we're there. This is what we want to teach them. Moreover, it introduced a new uh, educational methodology, new instructional methodologies, and it embraces many theoretical and practical. Embracing many theoretical and practical. Work. Now, remember, we have people who have experience. They might be in the classroom or, uh, or, or in, in, in practice simply because they would like to gain some basic philosophical foundation. So we would like to, uh, to have more theory. But when we do have more theoretical driven, we want to have practicality in order to have them embed and also have an understanding of one and the other and how they both interact into, into and how they, they could also best explain to others. So what, what else it did is it, it, it changed the relationship between teachers and learners. It opposed the view in that teachers are a role who are designated to simply bank Frere, to bank or just to put knowledge into the minds of the students. Well, of course, but now what we do see is that now teachers have more of a role of facilitator. They need to organize, stimulate, and also evaluate a very highly complex environment of education. And the only, uh, the, 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 the purpose why they're there, they need to facilitate this learning to the, to the student. In other words, the student must be able to, to learn that the content on their own because that's how they learn theirs. Another principle was that it, education was an instrument of social change. Remember, we're going back to social reform. Well, it plays a very strong emphasis on the on the role of education to promote social change. Education simply doesn't doesn't prepare people to fit into society, but but rather it seeks to to change to fundamentally. Uh, prepare people to change societies, to change environments, to bring, uh, to evolve forward, uh, regardless how that evolvement and how, and how that progress comes along. So let's take a quick look. So there are five foundational principles that uh, that uh, Dr. Elias and uh, and uh, Marin talk onto this book, and uh, they are a broadened view of education, a new focal point in education, a new education methodology a changed relationship between teachers and learners, and education as an instrument of change. So let's talk about some final thought. What, what about it? What is progressive thought? What does it do? What is pragmatism? On? Well, first of all, it had very much impact. It, has a very, it had a very high impact on the adult education than any other school of thought. Well, 
the reason why is because it generated a great deal of dif discussion. Now remember, we're moving from uh, discipline-based thought to a more practical, hands-on discipline, uh, uh, school of thought. Therefore, the changes at times are, 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 are disagreed among scholars and also they're argued through the process. But what we have to know, though, it, 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 this was a praiseworthy effort by scholars to respond to the needs of the American society. Remember, uh, American society was in the midst of social reforms, in the midst of democratic reforms, in the midst of industrialization. And in order to meet those challenges, this type of thought had to progress. In other words, it was, a, it was, it was essential for this type of thought to progress and move forward to respond to the needs at the time that it, it was required. And, and remember, uh, according to progressivists, uh, the education is a reflective process. It is not an output, but it's a continuing, ongoing, reflexive, uh, uh, reflexive problem. Throughout this time, the many, many, many scholars have also showed how, how it is related to social goals. In other words, it's not simply there to learn, but also to incorporate in the social, in the social life uh, of, of, of the people and also the societies that they live in because of policy making and many other issues. That are. Uh, again, the source is written from uh, Dr. John Elias and uh, Sharon B. Merriam. This is uh, the book that I'm uh, utilizing. It's one of my uh, favorite books. I read it every day. As you can see, I have marked it. If, uh, and it's sourced according to the APA 6 edition. And uh, if you do have any questions or any concern or something that I could best uh, learn and understand from you also, I would greatly appreciate if you can contact me at indrid.vuchai at okstate.edu or visit my website at www.indridvuchai.com. Thank you.